Hello and welcome to the After Bedtime Podcast. I am your host, HP Burrito. And on tonight's episode, I want to talk about our universe. Did you know half of our universe was missing? But they found it. <laughs> Alright, let me explain what's going on. All right, all right. As you may or may not know, our universe is comprised of dark matter and dark energy, and also normal matter, or, or baryonic matter, okay? That's what we know as normal matter, okay? We don't really know what dark matter is, but that's about 27% of our universe. We have dark energy, which is about 68% of our universe. So the last 5% of this baryonic matter, the, the normal matter that we know of our universe, is left. But we can only account for about 2.5, so about half of that matter we can account for in everything we see. You, me, the earth, the sun, the stars, the planets, all that is comprised of this normal matter, this baryonic matter. Okay, so let's start in the beginning, okay? And by beginning, I mean the beginning of time itself, the the creation of our universe in what was known as the Big Bang, okay? When the Big Bang happened, the universe exploded into existence. As the Bible says, God said, let there be light, and it was good. Well, the light was a big bang exploding, in my opinion. All right, I'm, I know I'm going to get hate mail from creationists on this one, but I'm just saying, in my opinion, this is how it happened, okay? I wasn't there, so I can't confirm or deny it, but this is what faith is. Anyway, back on track. So when the big bang happened, okay, we had a, that explosion happen, and it was hot. I mean, it was hot. And um, uh, we had all these creations of these new atoms and molecules, you know, hydrogen, neutrino particles, freaking helium, all these atoms just were being created in the very beginning moments of the Big Bang. In the first minutes of the Big Bang, all these things are being created. Well, all these atoms were created within the first 20 minutes, because that's all it took for the universe to get cold. Okay, so all of our matter that was created in the first... 20 minutes of the Big Bang were created after the universe cooled down and no more was being able to be created because it wasn't hot enough anymore. We understand this part. So all that right there equals up to 5% of our universe. Now we've only been able to find, you know, half of that. 2.5% of our universe is all that we found within ourselves and the planets and the stars and things. So the real question has been, where's the other 2.5%? Where's the missing half of our universe? Well, since the 1990s, scientists have been looking for this missing baryonic matter. And thanks to lightning and a phenomenon that they've noticed here on Earth with lightning, they believe they found it because of another phenomenon that is happening out in space. Okay, let me explain what I mean by this, okay? When we see lightning, we see the lightning itself hit the ground and we then we hear the thunder come after us okay that's the radio waves of the sounds coming through off the lightning okay well those electromagnetic radio waves go out in all directions once the lightning strikes okay they, they go down to the earth they comes out to us and we hear it as the thunder well they also goes up into the the space into our atmosphere and when, when these radio waves go up through our atmosphere they actually come back down to the other side of the planet by following the electromagnetic field of the earth okay so now we have these electromagnetic waves going up and around the earth through the electromagnetic field and we're able to hear these lightning strikes as whistlers on the other side of the earth and the reason you're able to hear these strikes on the other side of the planet from the lightning is because when the lightning strikes, it sends out those waves out. And as it goes around our electromagnetic field, stray or free electrons that are in our upper atmosphere and out into space, you know, within our magnetic field are up there and they slow down the waves itself from the lightning strikes, the electromagnetic waves. So... When this happens, we have a dispersion, kind of like light through a prism. You get the three colors coming off the light of of a single white light. Well, you have the same thing with the sound and the electromagnetic waves that are are sent out from the lightning strikes around the Earth. So that dispersion slows down the waves enough that it's actually able to go go into an audio 
range that we can hear on the computer as a whistler. Okay. In 2007, the first fast radio bursts were discovered, and scientists don't know exactly what was causing these fast radio bursts, but they were able to determine where they were coming from. And the way they were able to determine where they were coming from was because the fast radio burst was almost exactly the same thing as we were getting with the whistlers, except out in outer space. Pretty much there was something in a distant galaxy, like a magnetar or maybe even a black hole, you know, or a supermassive black hole at that, that were sending out these radio waves out into space. And because of the dispersion of those you know, waves coming at us, through hydrogen atoms that were out in space, we were able to get to the sounds of the fast radio burst. Okay, I know what you guys are thinking, and before you go into that comment section and start asking me all these questions, I'm going to answer that question right now, okay? We've gotten this far, and you're wondering, okay, where's the missing half of the universe? You still haven't explained, Burrito, where the missing half of the universe is at. And I'm going to get to that right now. The... When we have these fast radio bursts that are coming from distant galaxies, we're assuming they're coming from, like I said, magnetars or quasars, or, you know, which is a center of a black hole, which is a quasar. Okay, when these quasars send out these electromagnetic waves towards us, and they get redshifted through the hydrogen atoms, and then, you know, they get to us, and they slow down, and we get to hear them as a fast radio burst, well, we can detect all that, and what it is is that, that all... All that shifting can, is being recorded, and we call that the Lyman Alpha Force. Okay, the Lyman Alpha Force is uh, a pretty much a one-dimensional map of where all the hydrogen is between us and that quasar that sent the fast radio burst. So, with all those shifting, we can detect how far the hydrogen is between us and that distant galaxy, and if we add all that up. That's where we find the missing baryon particles, okay? It's in what scientists call a state of medium hot, okay? And um, what they say is, in between the galaxies, there's areas of this matter that's just there, but it's in such small numbers that it cannot be detected by just looking out through a telescope, okay? So by using these fast radio bursts, and the Lyman Alpha Forest maps, we can detect the baryonic matter out in this warm, hot intergalactic medium, or as the scientists have to call it, WIM for short. So in this WIM is where all the missing baryonic matter is. It's all stretched out there in filaments and sh in sheets of plasma that are not hot enough to be seen, but can be detected using the fast radio burst and the Lyman Alpha Forest maps. Okay, I just think it's crazy how that just looking for answers for what the fast radio bursts were, we were able to solve the baryonic problem and find the missing half of our universe. Because that's where it's at. It's out there in the stars, in these filaments of this plasma and baryonic matter just floating out there in space in between the galaxies, in between us and galaxy far away it's just it's amazing that they're able to detect that kind of things and it's just a matter of time before we go into space and start exploring space in mass to be able to see these things and find these things and be able to witness it and see it up close and personal and I just wish I would be alive for that because I would love to be able to see some of these whim areas, you know, these, this warm, hot, intergalactic medium zone area. That'd be kind of cool. But uh, what do you guys think about this? Do you think that now that we know where all the matter is in the universe, that it gets us closer to going out into space? I kind of hope it does. <laughs> well, anyway, that's enough for me. Leave a like for the video if you liked it. Comment below to, you know, continue the discussion about you know, the universe and anything else you guys want to talk about. I mean, I'm open for suggestions, you know. The next podcast might be one of your ideas. So, thanks again, guys, and we'll see you next time after bedtime. Good night, everybody.